Hello guys, Squirrel Face here to do a, a review of a, a film that is half pseudo snuff film and half, uh, I guess you could say, like crime thriller. It's from Argentina. They're not really known for producing this type of filth, uh, to my knowledge. But uh, this film has caused quite a stir for those that have heard it. And that film today that I'll be reviewing is Snuff 102. Uh, apparently while this was uh, screened at a festival, members of the audience were leaving and when they were leaving they actually attacked the director, like rioted against him by like punching him and kicking him. So already this film is kind of a must see for me because I like to see that type of stuff, like something that causes such a reaction. Apparently uh, members of the audience thought that certain scenes in this movie were real. Some are, but some aren't. Uh, obviously people thought that this film was way too disturbing and uh, cruel for people to see. Spanner's Germ 669 did a review of this and uh, he said over and over again how this film is really uh, really kind of cruel and just kind of like evil. And uh, I, will, I will agree a little bit with that, but uh, this film I believe is a lot more than just another August Underground. This film is about a female reporter who is uh, doing a report on uh, on snuff films and she's talking to this like professor that knows about audiovisual violence and he's talking to her about it. Meanwhile we also see scenes documenting a pseudo snuff film with uh, three victims and they are victims number 100, 101, and 102. Hence the title Snuff 102. And uh, this film is mostly about victim number 102. And uh, throughout the story we see uh, the victim's stories and uh, two of them are uh, crack whores, like, for lack of a better term. Even the preg There's a pregnant lady in here and even she is a uh, so-called crack whore, literally. But uh, the other one we don't really know too much about, but uh, she's number 102 and we find out more about her later. Uh, if you haven't figured out the plot twist, you probably already, I mean, you, you'll you know what it is within like 10 seconds of this movie. Uh, this movie kind of, uh, mixes real footage, like with the fake footage, not like Faces of Death, but like the first scene in this movie, the opening shot of the movie is showing that like the torture of a monkey, and uh, I sk skipped this scene. I don't really like watching animal torture. Like I didn't even watch uh, the animal torture and cannibal holocaust. But uh, I'm kind of a pussy like that. I don't know. I don't like real stuff. I feel like stuff should be fantasy. You know what I mean? For films. But uh, there is some of that in here. So take caution. There's uh, a scene involving a pig too. And uh, later on, the reporter's like researching like websites and uh, like they show like certain clips in there that are pretty hardcore, that are real, to my knowledge, like, even one where, like, a woman has, like, nails, like, pounded through her breasts, like, the skin, like, a little bit, and, uh, I'm not sure if that was real or not, but it looked pretty real. Uh, I felt that was kind of, kind of a cheap scare tactic by the director, and what's funny is it kind of contradicts some of the stuff in this movie, because the, th the, film professor talking to, to the woman talks about how uh, how violence is like portrayed and stuff like that. And it's a lot uh, deeper than uh, you'd think it would be for this type of film. And it kind of contradicted it because uh, the film professor even said film is a fantasy, not reality, unless he gets to the subject of porn. And uh, I thought that was, was kind of funny because it was like, why are they showing us real footage then? I mean, it was just a cheap way to shock people. But uh, going back to what the professor said about porn in the film, he made a great uh, kind of uh, analogy, if that's the term, of how uh, porn is snuff because the camera dismembers the bodies of the film. I thought that was uh, a lot deeper than uh, what I was expecting from this. And uh, there was some other stuff in there that's pretty deep, like... Uh, the tagline for this movie is a line in this movie where it's why be moral when we can be anonymous and uh, morality only is at the, the boundaries of your home and uh, 
this smell was pretty uh, deep. I felt pretty disturbing. Just, as far as the violence goes and the depravity of this film, uh, like I said, real footage is in there, so be careful. But uh, the pseudo snuff parts of this movie, some of it's very graphic and brutal, while others it's not. Like, some parts will see every hit, like every blow to the face. That's what she said. And uh, other shots, like when they're about to get hit, the screen goes black and we hear the hit, but we don't see it. And there's even one part where, this is a kind of a, a minor spoiler, where the pregnant woman is about to have her pregnant stomach stomped on by the killer. And uh, as soon as this happens, like, we keep like seeing this like scene repeat and repeat, like when he's about to do it, like in mid, like when his foot's in midair, and like then there's text that appears on the screen that says, basically, uh, you don't need to see this because you'll get the full picture. Why show it when uh, you get the full picture? Which is, again, why did they show us the real footage if we can get the picture? It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, kind of conflicting ideas here, but uh, kind of weird to me, ironic anyway, that like they're kind of parodying the film in the film. It's, it's, that was weird to me. Uh, would I recommend this? If you must see every hardcore film, I guess. This is a lot deeper than, uh, than like say August Underground's Mortem. I hated that, but uh, that's beside the point. But uh, a film that does this subject better is uh, the movie Thesis, I talked about that in my uh, last DVD update. That was my number two of the month. And uh, I definitely recommend seeing that more than this. But uh, if you must see this, uh, I got my copy off of DrivingClassicsDVD.com. There had to be two orders, and my other movie didn't come in with this order, and they shipped that. That other movie, by the way, is Oster Montag. And uh, I was going to say... And uh, Driving Classics DVD is like run by the same people who run Twisted Anger. And Twisted Anger also carries this movie. And I don't know whose shipping is better, but I've heard a lot of good things about Twisted Anger. So go from there, I guess. If you really want to see this, it's only 10 bucks. I had to make my own case, and it looks kind of shitty. I had to get it like, from iOffer.com. Oh, by the way, if uh, anybody knows anything about iOffer.com, please tell me. Like, is, if like, it's an okay website to buy from, because it looks kind of like eBay, and I don't want to get uh, screwed over after I purchase something. Because they, like, eat the schoolgirl on there for, like, four bucks. I'm fine just purchasing the movie like that. I can make a case myself. Not very good, but I can make a case. But uh, anyway, uh, that's my review for Snuff 102. See it if you like the hardcore stuff. And, uh... Another thing I'd like to say is, if anyone knows where I can get the soundtrack for this scene, please tell, for this movie, I'm sorry, because uh, it was really, really good. It was like pounding industrial music, and it was really good. It kind of sounded like a Aphex Twin. And uh, if anyone knows where I can get the soundtrack or get access to the songs in this movie, please tell me. Because uh, the soundtrack really added to this movie a lot. I loved it. Like, that's something that I'd have on my iPod, because I, I kind of like that type of stuff. But uh, that's it, guys. That's my review for Snuff 102. Check it out if you want to. Uh, yeah. Uh, happy Easter.